All right, so we're going to start with plain objects, sorry. Again, just like in the previous tutorial. And this plain object, I'm going to call this floor. Then bring in, um, what do we use today? Okay, let's bring in this. And I think I'm going to um, just bring in different objects and put them together. I have this, that, and um, maybe this. So I'm going to go to my MoGraph cloner. Then I'm going to put all of this into a cloner object. Make the cloner anything whatsoever you want. So, but I want this to be grid array and bring this up. Okay, and the cloner object, I want to increase the Y. And I think this is fine. Not iterate, I want to randomize this. Okay, so let's start with this. So we have this cloner object. So I'm going to select the floor, right click. So if you, I'm going to be a little bit fast. If you were not, if you want to know more about the full um, settings, you can just go to my previous tutorial. I'm going to put the link uh, in the description and also at the top. So just click there and you will see most of that. So I'm going to add a floor object, a collider object to that. So the cloner I'm going to add in a rigid object. So if I play this, this happens. Okay, so by default, so this is 2000 and, uh, no, sorry, sorry about that. This is R21 and by default, some settings have been done for us. But if we are using R20 backwards, this will be none. And if you play, um, this will be off also, yeah. Yeah, this is what you're going to get. So if you're using the previous version, you're going to have that. So under the dynamics, everything is fine. If you want to understand all about some of the settings, you can just go to the previous tutorial. Again, so in the previous versions of um, Cinema 4D, this is what you're going to have. So your inheritor will be none and individual element will be off. So if you play this, what happens is that Cinema 4D treats everything as one object and the four as objects that are joined together, connected together in one way or the other. So what we want to do is we want to affect each of these um, parents as individual elements. So what we can do is we change this. You can change this to either apply to children or compound um, coalition shapes. You go to apply to children and you play nothing happens to you and the reason is because we need to change the individual elements into top level or all so if we change this to top level or all then it treats individual parts as it treats each of the uh, objects in the clone as individual elements and add um, some uh, dynamics to them all right so that is what that does then if you go back to this inherit tag you have compound um collision shape and that also does the same thing it takes the collision shape of that um, cloner and keep it as one object so in this case then this doesn't really have effects changing this individual element doesn't really have effect for you to have effect on this you have to change this to apply that to children so it applies to each of these children in this all right so that is there for you to do so now another thing you can also do is that you can also decide to say okay I want remember in the previous tutorial about this immediate I want to go to the cloner object and I don't want to have um, I don't want to have this I just want to have this then I'm going to change this just quickly want to delete this and go to the cloner object here increase and also increase then reduce this value such that they are just touching one another 
So what I'm trying to do is to create more like a wall of um, cubes that I want to hit something at. All right, so let's assume this is going to be the wall and bring this down a little bit. Just that it's, it's just at the top, doesn't interact. I don't want it to have this effect. I just want it to go up a little bit and not too much on top of this floor. I think this is fine. So if you play this now, it falls and everything goes. So you have that. So what we can do is that you can notice what happens that this, there is a jump. You can notice if I play, it comes down and try to stay. So what we can do now is to um, save this um, initial position. And keep that. So for me to save the initial position, I have to go to the rigid tag and click on set initial state. So if I click on set initial state and I come back, then the object is sitting on that. So what we can do is just change this from immediately to on collision. So right now, if we play till infinity, nothing happens. Nothing happens because it's looking for something to collide. Remember in the previous tutorial. So you can hit a sphere or an object to this and let it interact with this object. So if I select this, if you notice in the previous tutorial, I just keyframe this. Well, I don't want to keyframe this in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another rigid tag to this. So for this rigid tag, this is going to be calculated immediately. But I'm just going to add initial velocity that pushes this ball along the z-axis. So let's just say we want it to be 1, 5. So if we play this now, this interacts, but that force is not enough. So we can make this force maybe three, two times the size. And let's see what we have. So we hit this, you notice the effects you get. All right. So I'm going to be talking about a lot of things here, okay? So if you notice the effect of the fall, if we go back to this fair and go to the mass and change this from the custom to from that world mass to custom mass, if we play, notice what happens, okay? Now, this is where this comes in handy. If you bring this to one and play, the effect is not that much because this mass is not that large. That's why it's not really having impact to push this. So, but what we can do is we can start increasing this mass. And the higher the value, that means the heavier it is and the more it's going to impact this object and fall the object. Okay. So I hope that is self-explanatory self -explanatory about this mass. Okay. So if you hit this, hit this and everything falls. So let's now look at coming back to this and under the force tab, we have this follow position. I said I was going to talk about this. Now what the follow position does is that it's, notice the way they fall, all the, um, all the children in the clone fall. So you can decide to glue them together. So for you to glue them together, you can use this follow position and rotation to do that. So if I bring this follow position to two, notice what happens. So let's replace that. Notice they try to stick themselves together. So the higher the value, the more they stick together. So if I make this 20 and play, notice they stay together and nothing happens. So you can use this for any effect whatsoever. So if we bring this back to, let's say 0.5, and also the same thing with rotation and play this. You notice the fall and they try to glue themselves together. If you bring this to point one, they don't have enough force to glue them together. So the little that can glue will glue and those that can't will just go out. So that is what this follow position does. So you can actually use this to do a more like a an animation sort of so if i do this so just look at what i'm trying to do if i bring this to point two to start with and i play and some of them fall and immediately i bring this to 10 and notice 
all of them will come back. So let's bring this. As soon as I hit enter, they come back into position. And if I bring this back to zero, they fall down and all that. So you can actually use this for some effects. And that is pretty much it for adding dynamics to clone objects and also adding a few other things to this. So I think I'm going to stop here. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about soft body um, tag. So if this was helpful, please do give me a like and a thumbs up and also share the video and because it helps me. And if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe to my channel because I make tutorials like this every time. So do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.